find that they think they're naturally delicious blue buffalo treats. Tonight's mystery round is brought to you by Prevagen. Prevagen. Your brain changes as you get older. Prevagen helps your brain. In clinical trials, Prevagen improved memory. Prevagen, no prescription required. $10,000. Thank you very much. So on the lyric. Themselves on. Okay. Everyone's on mute. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. O merciful and providential Father, creator of all creatures, you who are bountiful to all in gifts of goodness. Accept the supplications of your servants at this evening hour. Have mercy, Lord, on all the world, on your holy church, on the sick, on the afflicted, on those who travel by land, by water, and by air, on the confessors and the penitents, and on the souls of the departed. For you, Lord Almighty, knows our needs and necessities better than we can understand and ask. And to you, with your Son and all Holy Spirit, be glory, dominion, and honor, now and always, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Okay. Today we're going to finish up sacraments, and we're going to be talking about the sacrament of ordination, something you may be familiar with, but probably not as much as the other sacraments. But I want to give an overall of the sacrament itself and then talk about the ordinations in our church of the timid, the clerk, subdeacon, deacon, and priest. We'll leave the bishop out of the picture at this time. Uh, but anyway, so we in the sacrament of ordination. Oh, before I forget, um, for our next session, I'll be sending out a link to a YouTube video. We're going to do another video. It's called Martin the Cobbler. Uh, it's a cartoon, clam claymation cartoon from the original story by Tolstoy. Uh, it's, it's a fascinating story. Uh, I'll send it out. Uh, Friday when I send out my Sunday bulletin. Um, take a look at it. It's about 28 minutes long. And I will also send out a narrative with it, give it a little description, telling you what to pay attention to in the video. I've used this for uh, my almost my entire priesthood uh, with both teenagers, with, a, uh, with adults, uh, with children, um, <clears throat> every time I watch it, I, I get something more out of it. So I encourage you to take your time and look at it. Uh, you may want to look at it and watch it more than once. Um, usually the way we do it is we watch it. You read the narrative to see what to pay attention to and then watch it again. So that information will be coming out to you. Uh, Friday. Okay. Um, today, like I said, we're going to talk about the sacrament of ordination. At the time of Jesus, we know, without question, they were the apostles. Um, today, we use different names, a different name for those that are apostles. Instead of apostles, we call them deacons, priests, bishops. But they are everything that the apostles were. Um, you may recall how Jesus chose the apostles to be his co-workers. In the Gospel of Luke, we read the following. And these days he went out into the hills to pray. And all night he continued in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples and chose from them twelve whom he named the apostles. Jesus ordained the apostles to be his co-workers when he breathed the Holy Spirit upon them. 
So we see that the sacrament of ordination was instituted by Jesus himself after his resurrection. John's gospel tells us when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. In the book of Acts, we know that the first seven deacons were ordained by the 12 apostles. The seven candidates were set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, the apostles laid their hands upon them. When priests or presbyters were ordained, we read, Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them that is Barnabas and Saul, and sent them off from the book of Acts. Now, speaking of his ordination to the office of what we call today bishop, the apostle Paul said to Timothy, I beseech you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of hands. But God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit, spirit of power and love and self-control. And in the first letter to Timothy, Paul again reminds him, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given you by prophetic utterance when, <laughs> excuse me, when the elders laid their hands on you. Paul spoke these words to Timothy, whom he had just ordained to the office, like I said, of what we call today the bishop. Christ ordained the apostles to be his first priests. He sent them out in ministry to preach the kingdom, to exhort people to repentance, to heal the sick, and to cast out demons. At the Last Supper, he authorized them, and he commanded them to continue the Eucharist. He said, do this in remembrance of me. And when he appeared to them on Easter evening, he gave them the power of forgiving sins. We see that in John chapter 20. The apostles were chosen and ordained in order to fulfill the great commission that we read at the end of Matthew's gospel. When Jesus tells them, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. So we should be able to understand that when a deacon or a priest or a bishop is ordained or consecrated into the Armenian Orthodox Church, it is done in a direct succession from Jesus Christ himself. From Jesus Christ to the apostles, the rest, the apostles Thaddeus and Bartholomew, to those who were chosen by Thaddeus and Bartholomew to be the leaders, the elders in Armenia, to the time of St. Gregory the Illuminator, through the order of bishops and priests, all the way down to, through the centuries, to our church today. So the idea of holy orders in the Armenian church, because the Orthodox church is not the same as we'll say the Protestant churches. Our church is an organized society. It is composed of all baptized persons who are united in the same faith, the same holy communion, the same sacraments under the same ecclesiastical authority. 
and those who exercise this ecclesiastical authority form the clergy of offices of the church who serve God, who teach and sanctify the faithful and govern the church. And this authority is to serve, to teach, sanctify, and to govern. And it is not given by election or appointment, but by the sacred sacrament, sacred sacrament of ordination. Why do I say sacred sacrament? Because it comes to us through all those who preceded the clergy of today directly to Jesus Christ. And it's true that by baptism, all Christians, all Christians are endowed with the priesthood of the laity. All who have an obligation to offer up to God the spiritual sacrifice of thankfulness, of thanksgiving, of prayers, the acts of faith, hope, charity, love. But only those men who receive the sacrament of the holy orders are clergymen of God in the full sense of the word. Now for the ordination of any cleric, except for a bishop, one bishop is sufficient to administer the sacrament. So for the minor orders, the major orders to priesthood, all you need is one bishop. The consecration of a bishop, according to the canons of our Armenian church and other Orthodox churches, is performed by His Holiness, the Catholicos of all Armenians, and having at least two other bishops assisting him. The canon that we have actually states it should be, <coughs> excuse me, it should be nine. If you don't have nine, seven is okay. If you don't have seven, uh, five is okay, but there must be at least three people. And the consent of the laity is expressed formally at the service of ordination when the choir and the people together sing, he is worthy. And I'll get into that a little bit more. Any questions up to this point? Okay. So there are nine ranks, astijans, of those who are to be ordained in the Armenian church. There are the four minor orders of Tabid. You get four rites. The subdeacon is the fifth rite, astijan. And these are the minor orders. Then we come to the major order of deacon, which is the sixth Astijan, a priest, which is the seventh Astijan, bishop, which is the eighth, and the Gatholigos of all Armenians is number nine. But understand, I want you to understand one thing. The fullness of the priesthood is the priest. And we see this during the divine liturgy. You probably have never really recognized what it is that the priest or bishop is doing at this, at this time. And the time I'm speaking of is right before the chalice is brought up in procession. Before the chalice is brought up, the priest, the simple kahana of Atabe, takes off his crown, places it to one side. If he wears a pectoral cross, he takes that off and places it to one side. He removes his slippers and stands in his stocking feet before the altar. If he is a bishop, he takes off his mitre, creed. He takes off his external vestments that give the Episcopal rank, the emipuron. And then in the back, there are two, they look, I hate to say it, but they look like two tails on the back of his collar. Those come off. He takes off his Episcopal ring, on this hand, actually, um, and he removes his slippers, and he takes off his bonaga, his uh, medallion that he wears, is significant, that uh, signifies the bishop. 
all that comes off. Why do I say all this? I said it's the fullness of the priesthood. It is when we are ordained, we are ordained a priest. And the fullness of the priesthood is being able to celebrate the sacrament of holy Badarak. And so we stand before God as a simple priest, not as the Bartabed, not as the bishop, not as the Gatoligos, but as a simple priest. And the Badarak is celebrated in that manner. Doesn't matter what rank we hold. Any questions? Okay. All right. So before entering the major ranks of ecclesiastical order of the Armenian Church, a person must have been ordained to the four minor ranks. And when he receives these four minor ranks, he's known as a tibit or a clerk. And through the minor orders, the tibit is conferred special privileges and responsibilities, which are the excuse me, foundation of his service to the church as a participant during the worship services and outside the worship service. And there are four distinct functions of a tibit. The first function is that of a doorkeeper, turnabat, except. And the prayer that the bishop reads over the candidate says, but the remembrance that you have to answer to God for this office and for everything that is locked up by these keys, which I now give to you, influence all your actions. Be watchful and always pray when you open and close the door of the church. Now remember, these responsibilities go back to a time when we didn't have custodians and janitors and everybody in the parish council have a key to the church or whatnot. It was the responsibility of this, of the tibis. Uh, are you familiar with the ritual in Jerusalem that there is one family that has been given the keys to the Holy Sepulchre and has been passed down generation to generation to generation? And is that one family that every morning opens the doors of the Holy Sepulchre and at night closes the doors of the Holy Sepulchre. The second astijan that he receives, the ritual, is of a reader in Terzoch in Armenia. And the prayer is, take these books and be relators of God's word, instructing yourselves in them. And if you fulfill your duties with pure mind and heart, you shall have your portion among the companies of the saints and of those who have loved God. And, brethren, you have become readers in the house of the Lord. This dignity implies duty which you are bound to fill. They are given the responsibility, the third responsibility, of being an exorcist. When I say exorcist, don't think of the movie. Exorcism is basically prayers for the sick at, at each baptism the priest performs an exorcism asking God to keep this child or this individual away from the evils of Satan we offer a renunciation of Satan as well the bishop prays following uh, the, the following way give strength to these thy servants to perform the office of exorcist for which we now lay our hands upon them remember those words causing them by means of grace which thou doth abundantly bestow, to be truly givers of health, praying as the spiritual physicians of the Holy Church. He says, now take this book and store up the words written there in your mind. I now give you the authority to place your hands <coughs> upon those possessed with evil in their hearts and bodies, praying for them, and also who are about to be baptized, that they renounce all evil. And finally, you get the right to be a candle boy, candle bearer. Bless now these thy servants, that they might light the candles in the holy church and present the wine that is to be the blood of thy son and bring the bread that is to become the body of our Lord. 
Bless these thy servants who are confirmed in the office of acolytes. So you have an understanding that it's not just anyone who's going to be, hey, I like to serve at the altar to be able to do these functions. And I say that um, because I know that in our churches today, many times there are individuals who are just said, I need somebody to help me at the altar, put on a shabbat and come and help me. But in the early church, and the church up until the time of, we'll say, the genocide, it was a very serious thing to be ordained a tibi, um, to, to be given these responsibilities. Now, all this, this ordination takes place, of course, in the church in the center aisle. It starts at the door of the church, and it progresses in three stops up until the chancel. And then they come before the bishop who is seated in the chancel facing the people. That's the tibi. Four, you get the first four ostejans. Questions? Yeah, Masha. Uh, Derhai, I didn't, I didn't know an acolyte could carry the wine and the. Um, when you say carry the wine, the not, the not the chalice. Oh, okay. He carries. Right. The little bottle, the cruet of that we put the wine in, okay, and the nishrat, and he presents those to the priest, who takes those, blesses them, and then puts them in the chalice, and they put it to one side before it's brought up in procession. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, good question. Uh, what is yes? Yes. Um, I just we actually had a to be um ordination this weekend, and um yes. I, I was just interested, why don't they get ordained with the miron? No, that's a consecration. That's for the major, that's for the major order of priest. Oh, a consecration, I guess. Because okay. as the priest, you are you are you are consecrated with that miron, and it is now your responsibility to celebrate the Buddha. You are given different authority. These are the minor orders. And it's more like you are given permission to do these things. Right? What about the deacon? I know you're coming to deacon, so I'll wait. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to come to subdeacon. Subdeacon is still a minor order. Gisa Sargavak, half deacon in army. And the requirements for the ordination that a subdeacon it are obviously a little bit more extensive than the uh, Tibet. Um the candidate, also obviously, for the uh, order of subdeacon must receive the fir fir first four minor orders. Um, and the subdeaconate is really a transitional rank between tumid and full deacon in which a young man is preparing himself for full of service at a church. Now, just before the scriptural readings, the Old Testament, the epistle, and so forth. The rite of ordination begins with the choir singing the hymn, Urach Led Supiegeretzi, Rejoice, O Holy Church. You've heard this many times throughout the year at weddings, every wedding we sing it, uh, at ordinations, and on other occasions as well. Now, the candidate for subdeacon is brought before the bishop who approaches the bishop on his knees, starting from the far left of the bema. When I say far left, uh, in layman's term, stage left. If you're facing the altar, it's this side. This is the left side, because it's always looking out from the altar that tells you the right side and the left side. You know where the bishop's chair is? on the right side of the church, Acha Gomya. Looking out, it's there. I don't know if I'm coming through on the right or the left on the screen, but uh, if you can imagine yourself standing at the altar, looking at the congregation, to the right is where the bishop's chair is, that's the Acha Gomya, right side. Sacha Gomya is the left side of the church. And the sponsoring priest requests the bishop to ordain the candidate to, re, to the rank of subdeacon. 
and the bishop who is seated at the holy altar, he lays his hand on the candidate and prays that God will breathe his Holy Spirit into him so that he may perform his duties worthily. Remember the passage that I read to you about Jesus breathing the Holy Spirit upon his apostles. So, there are <clears throat> various actions that take place for this uh, uh, ordination. The bishop gives the candidate the urad. And he says, accept the manifold for the reservation of thy soul, that thou may serve with pure hands in the house of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he places the urad on the left arm of the candidate. <clears throat> and then the bishop gives him an empty chalice with the pattern. And he says, take this holy chalice and be authorized to carry it to the holy altar of the Lord for the great and precious mystery of Christ our God, to whom belong glory, power, and so on and so forth. Not the chalice with the wine and the nishkari. But at the beginning of Badarak, <clears throat> he is to be able to carry that empty chalice and present it to the priest for the priest to bless the nishkari and the wine and place it in there. And then another deacon, full deacon, is able to carry it and place it on the side niche or the side altar waiting for it to be brought up in possession. He gives the <clears throat> book of lectures of the Holy Badrak to the candidate. I present you with the book of lectures and authorize you to read them in the church of God for the living and for the dead in the name of the Father and the Son. And then he says, take these holy vestments of the Badrak and be authorized to serve and to clothe the priest in the administration of mysteries of Christ of God. He is given the permission to vest the priest. The Tibbids don't have this. You must be a subdeacon, at least in order to vest the priest. And then the bishop admonishes him. See to what a sacrament you have been called. For you have been promoted from a lower office. Henceforth be watchful in this ministry. Be aware of sloth. And the shrewd bread from uh, a shrewd bread which Christ has given to the church as the bread of life. Take heed to prepare as much as required for the communion of the people, neither more nor less. In the vessel in which you shall wash the corporal linen. Take care not to soak any other thing. And the water you shall wash in it shall be poured into the baptismal font. And in the basin in which you wash the napkin of the holy altar. Therein you shall wash all the linen of the church. I tell you now all this that you may be faithful, that you may fulfill your office. And what is all this saying? Underneath the chalice. During the Badarak is placed a white linen. Anybody have any idea what that is significant of, what it represents? The shroud? Huh? The shroud of Jesus? Yeah, the shroud that was placed on the, uh, over Jesus to, at, the, at his uh, burial. So that white linen is placed underneath, is placed on the altar upon which the chalice is placed, symbolic of the shroud of Jesus. And so the bishop is telling the subdeacon, listen, this is going to be your job. And he also has a responsibility of, of, of having that white linen placed at the altar before Badarak begins. But you're also going to have the responsibility, the privilege, the right, R-I-T-E right, to wash that linen and other linens that are used in the sacrament of Holy Communion, uh, Holy Badarak as well. And where are you going to wash this? You're going to wash it in the baptismal font. Oh. Why? Because in our baptismal fonts, at least the way it should be done, is that the drain of that font goes directly into the ground. Oh. 
water is not mixed with sewer water or any other water. Oh. The drain is to go directly into the ground. And so that corporal, the white cloth, is to be washed in such a manner because it happens that the wine or the blood of Christ can be spilled onto that. Oh. It shouldn't be washed in just in the sink and down the drain. It's sacred. It becomes sacred. So all the linens that are offered uh, that are that are on the altar that are used, the subdeacon has the responsibility to deal with. Questions? We got a question, Masha. Dehide, how how can you recognize a subdeacon from a full deacon? Is it with the um Ura. okay the, the well, good question? The Urad of the subdeacon when he is ordained is placed on his left arm. And it's oh. it's about this long, the, the proper Urad. And it should be worn on the left arm during Badak, not on the shoulder. Okay. It is the deacon, and we'll get to that. The deacon is the one that wears the urad on his shoulder. But some deacons take it off and they put it on their shoulder and they wear it that way. It's wrong. It should be worn on the arm. Okay. okay? Any other question? What about the deacons that don't have that at all? They're just, they're they're when you this is you know like when you're in the military, what do they give you? Stripes, right? This is your stripe. Okay. When you're ordained a to be, you don't have any stripes. When you're ordained a subdeacon, you get the stripe that hangs on your arm. When you're ordained a deacon, as I'll get into, it's taken off your arm and placed on your shoulder. Okay. Okay. Questions? No? Okay, we move on. So now we get to the rite of ordination of the deacon. There are three major orders of the clergy. Deacon, priest, bishop. Three major orders of the clergy. Now, in the beginning, the apostles were the sole ministers the soul in, the, in the church, the early church. They were the teachers. They were the sanctifiers. They were the rules in the church. They even saw to the material needs of the faithful. But as the <clears throat> membership of the church increased, the apostles created other offices to assist them. And the first order that was established was that of deacon. And the first deacons were elected by the faithful, by the people, and were appointed and ordained by the apostles to distribute aid to the faithful, as well as to serve the public dinner, the agape meal, the love fest, at which Holy Communion was administered. Um, that's why the deacons surround the table. How do we say altar in Armenian? It's not Choran. Sur Seran. Holy table. And the deacons surround the table to assist the celebrant, the priest, in the administration and the distribution of the meal, Holy Communion. Remember, all connections make sense. Kamats, kamats. Okay. So the ordination rite of a deacon begins with the <clears throat> bishop at the altar. The divine liturgy is celebrated. And we come to the portion of the divine liturgy before the scripture readings. And we sing the hymn, again, rejoice, O Holy Church. Who is to be happy? 
the church, the faithful, not the building. Imagine, would you say, talk to the building? No, you're talking to the faithful. You, you're the faithful. Because Christ, the King of heaven today, has crowned you with his cross and with his wondrous glory has adorned thy fortress. Now the bishop is seated upon the altar. He rising upon the altar. His throne is there. There's a chair for them on the right side of the altar. If you are facing the altar, facing the altar, it's on this side. Don't forget, looking out from the altar, Achagomyan, right side is this side. And so the Tibbets offer their psalm, the recitation of the psalm, until the senior deacon chants out loud. And he says, Holy Father, now the de the candidate for the diaconate is starts uh, starts to come before the uh, before the bishop from the middle of the chancel. He's downstairs. And as the psalms are being read, and they are Psalm 15 and Psalm 43, he begins to ascend the altar on his knees. And as he's going, he goes to his right and ascends the stairs and waits there at the top of the stairs. And the senior deacon says, Holy Father, our mother, the Holy Church, requests that you ordain to the diaconate, subdeacon Bedros, whom she offers to you. Our mother, the Holy Church. Who is our mother, the Holy Church? Faithful. Faithful. Okay? You are the Holy Church. And so the mother of the Holy Church, we request that you ordain. Now the bishop doesn't just say, yeah, okay, come. He says, do you know that he is worthy? He is worthy? Is he courteous and polite in manners? Is he born of holy matrimony or of an unholy union? One who is to become a deacon cannot be a bastard. The results of unmarried people. He must be born of a holy union. And he says finally, and to what degree of wisdom and purity has he attained? And the senior deacon who is presenting the candidate says, as far as our human frailty allows us to know, we know and bear witness that having wisdom and purity, he is worthy to wear the yoke of this order. The bishop says, through the grace of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, we call the subdeacon to the office of diaconate. Therefore, let us make our supplications unto the mercy of God that he may illuminate him with the gifts of his sanctity through Jesus Christ, to whom is fitting glory and dominion on and so forth. And Gamats Gamats, the candidate, comes on his knees and he presents himself before the bishop. He gets to the, to the throne of where the bishop is seated and the bishop blesses him. And the deacon says, let us beseech the almighty God for who is about to be called to the order of the diaconate, that through this laying on of hands, remember, it goes back all the way to the beginning, laying on of hands, he, like St. Stephen, the first deacon and proto martyr, may be worthy to receive grace from Almighty God. May he save us and have mercy on us. And then there's this long prayer that the bishop recites, but he first places his hand on the head of the candidate. He goes through the entire prayer, and then Psalm 119 is recited by the Tabith, the clerks. And then the bishop again places his right hand on the head of the candidate, and he offers another prayer. And halfway through the prayer, it says, Accept now our prayers and pour down the grace of your Holy Spirit upon the servant, Hagel, 
who has come to enter into the service of your holy church. Keep him steadfast and immovable from all temptations of the enemy, that he may be pure before you in the universal church and walk with holy heart and sincere faith in all good works according to your beneficent will, so on and so forth. The candidate, after the completion of it, is turned and he faces the people. And he holds his hands up. Thusly. And there is a chant that is offered. And it is offered three times by the sponsoring clergy. The divine and heavenly gift that ever fulfills the necessities of the apostolic church now calls Hagel from the subdiaconate to the diaconate for the service of the Holy Church according to his own and to all the people's testimony. It is done three times. And each time it is done, the people led by the choir says, Arjania, he is worthy. To be ordained must receive the assent of the people, the faithful. You are the ones that are presenting him as a candidate. You are the ones that are going to say that he is worthy. And after doing this three times, the candidate turned to the bishop again, who is seated in his uh, in his chair, and he says, "The divine and heavenly gift that ever fulfills the necessities of the apostolic church now calls Hagop from the subdiaconate to the diaconate for the service of the holy church according to his own and to all the people's testimony. I place my hands upon him and let everyone pray." Let everyone pray that he may be worthy to perform the duties of the diaconate before this holy altar of God. And the clergy say three times, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. The people not only give assent, but the bishop is telling them, you, you have to pray for this person that he may be made worthy. Okay, any questions? No, good. Okay. It goes on. I don't want to go through all of it. We're getting out of time. Okay. Now, now the bishop places the stole, the urad, on the left shoulder of the newly ordained deacon. And he says to him, take this pure and holy stole from the hands of our Lord Jesus Christ and be pure before him for all the deceits of sin. Let your life and conversion be an example to the people who are holy in faith of Christ, that they may see you doing that by which you may be able to attain to everlasting life in Christ Jesus, our Lord, who is blessed forever. He then says to him, Receive the authority to read the Holy Gospel in the Church of God for the hearing of the living and for the commemoration of the dead. The bishop gives him the purvat, the thoroughfare, the censer, and he says, Receive permission to offer incense and to emit sweet odor during the administration of the sacrament of the Holy Bhagavad. He is given permission to do this. In other words, in order to do purvat, to use the purvat during the altar, yeah, it's cute. We get some kid, yeah, come on, let's show you how to do the swing. And you swing three times. And a, you have to be given the permission. And you have to have the rank of deacon at least. And then as the deacon is given the purvat, the bishop turns to him. And the newly ordained deacon says, again in peace, let us receive the Lord. Turning to the altar, he senses the altar three times. And then he turns to the bishop and he says, bless Lord. And the bishop blesses him, bless him and glory to the Father, the Holy Spirit, and so forth. Three times again. And that point, 
the ceremony of the ordination of the diaconate is over. Questions right now? Yes, Chris, unmute. Does each of those have? Is it like one year or a summer or? Okay, so Chris, I didn't get all of it. Start again and ask your question. How many years and how and where do they get training? In the early church, it was in the seminary. Because seminary. those those who are going to be ordained uh, were basically in the seminary for one reason. They were to become priests. Since then, we have left the seminaries and we are in the world. And so those that become deacon, it depends on how intelligent they are, how, how qualified they are, uh, how, how they're able to fulfill the requirements. And the requirements um, that we have is quite extensive. We, 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 we have requirements as to uh, what you need to know. And for a deacon, a full deacon, he needs to be able to know all of the hour services, the seven daily services. He knows that he needs to know the litanies of the divine liturgy, the services of blessing, blessing of water, blessing of the grapes, um, blessing of the fields, all his parts, the deacon's parts. Mm -hmm. uh, he has to be able to offer them uh, with accuracy, proficiency, and so forth. How long that takes depends on the individual. Some people it takes 20 years. Some people it takes, you know, two years. Uh, how serious are you to learn? But there are all these things that are required of the person. Um, I'm not going to go on to the priest uh, because we're, we're running low on time a little bit. But I just wanted to present a couple of, a couple of things uh, about the, the, the uh, ordination of the priest. The priest is ordained after receiving these four mi uh, five minor orders and the sixth order of the, of the diaconate. He is ordained as a priest, which is the seventh order. Everyone who is ordained into the priesthood is ordained priest. Kahana comes from the Jewish word. You may know the name Cohen. That's Kahana. Okay. So the priest is the Kahana, the priest. If you're going to become a celibate priest, and by the way, the, the ordination is two days. It's uh, Saturday evening, which is the calling, the examination by the bishop of the priest, the offering of confession of faith to the bishop by the candidate, uh, the renunciation of all the heretics, uh, heretical uh, teachings that are out there. Saturday is that. And then Sunday during the Badarak, the ordination takes place. And maybe we'll get to that another time. But I lost my train of thought. What was I going to say? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, oh, I know what I was going to say. There is, like I said, deacon, priest, bishop. Now, for priest, you are ordained kahana. You are ordained priest. If you, if you wish to remain uh, a celibate, in the evening of Sunday, after your ordination, you take your vows of celibacy and you receive your vera, the cowl, you know, the pointed Darth Vader hat. You see the, the vata beds and the uh, bishops wearing. That's the cowl, uh, vera in Armenian. Uh, that it shows that they are a, a member of the brotherhood. And to be a celibate priest, you are to be a member of a brotherhood, of a jurisdiction, either in Constantinople, the Brotherhood of Echmiazin, Antirias, or Jerusalem. These four centers that we have. Uh, and so you receive that and you become a, uh, you are called an apera, which simply means a celibate priest. I am a married priest, he is a celibate priest. After attaining knowledge, degrees, and so forth, to become, to be elevated, in title, you become a vartabed, which we'll say is equivalent to like a doctorate degree. Doctor, vartabed means teacher. Jewish, we call rabbi. 
So the Vachtabed is the teacher. He is the one that has given a doctrinal staff, the staff with the double-headed serpent, which represents wisdom and authority. And so <laughs> he comes, and when he preaches, he'll hold the cross in one hand and the kavazan in the other hand, the double-headed uh, uh, serpent. Further education, further knowledge, further wisdom, and so forth, he becomes Zara queen, doctor of doctors, a Zara queen vartabed, and he is given the purple cape to wear, the purple shurchar, sig signifying that he is of the rank of Zara queen vartabed. Still a priest, but in that celibacy classification. After that is the bishop, the ninth, excuse me, the eighth Astijan. And he is given further authority. And it is only the bishop that can ordain and consecrate. <coughs> Not a priest. You must be a bishop in order to ordain or consecrate a church or a picture or anything like that. Okay? So, I've given you all of this uh, to hopefully give you an understanding of what the priesthood and the diaconate uh, should represent to you and should have you should have as an understanding to you. It's not simply, uh, you know, Hagob is a nice guy. Hagob, come here. We want you to become a, an altar server and serve at the altar, and we're going to give you this astigen and so forth. It doesn't work that way. At least it's not supposed to. Because of what we use as uh, a reason for doing things, a Greek word called economia, the economy, the situation. Unfortunately, there are those that are ordained that are not truly prepared to be ordained to their various ranks, whether they're subdeacon or deacon or even priests or bishops. Uh, but out of necessity, so-called so -called necessity, they're given the ability to serve as a deacon. Um, but the requirements are quite stringent. And if you listen to the prayers carefully, you can understand that sense of holiness that is attached to the deacon who start with the deacon. It's not just a nice guy, come here, I want to teach you how to do purvat and sing the litanies of the uh, badarak and, and you know read this, read that, you can, you'll be a deacon. There is a very seriousness about it because as I said, the education of these individuals is done through the monastery, seminaries. And it was usually the intent of these individuals to become a priest. Okay. So somebody, I don't know, whoever is not muted, please mute. So that, you know, there is a seriousness of understanding of what has to be done, what has to be learned, what is to be offered, and is to be taken with a seriousness. It shouldn't be Eh, Vazanti, eh, that's okay. We don't have to worry about that. Eh, no, there's a seriousness because, again, the right of ordination goes back to Jesus Christ himself. And it's that breathing of the Holy Spirit that Christ did to his apostles, the laying on of hands of the bishop to the candidates of today, that continuation of the authority is granted. It's not something that should be taken lightly. Questions? Oh, one other thing before you have a question. I talked about the stole. Masha, you were asking me about the stole? Okay. The stole of the subdeacon, like I said, is hung on the arm. Okay? When the person is to be ordained a deacon, that stole is taken off his arm and put on his shoulder. As you see in your churches, the deacons were in a stall. When he is ordained a priest, the urad is taken off the shoulder and placed around the neck. That is called the por urad, stomach stall. And that is the yoke that the priest wears. You may, you know, be familiar with seeing priests of other denominations, Catholic or Episcopal, when they go to a hospital, they have this small strip of almost looks like a ribbon that they put around it. That's the porudad. That's the urad that 
we have that they put around their neck. So the priest wears that horurar. That stems from the urar of the subdeacon to the deacon and then to the priesthood. And it has it's sewn in the middle so that it comes together and stays that way. Okay. Now uh, question. Who has questions? Armana, you are? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Or not take that out, John. Arman, by the way, is a server subdeacon at the uh, St. Bartholomew's Church in Chelmsford, and he is also a student at St. Nessa's Seminary. He's studying to become a priest. God so willing. We, we give God him a lot of But I'm a right. Uh, when someone is a subdeacon, um, but they are permitted to wear the urar on their shoulder rather than carrying on their arm. Is it for convenience? Did, uh, the, did the bishop give permission to that individual or did the priest say you can do that? <laughs> uh, depends where I am. <laughs> I write that subdeacon wears it on his arm. You will see that many of the subdeacons that were ordained, especially by Bishop Daniel, they wear it on their arm. That's the proper place a subdeacon wears it. Right. Any other question? Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Oh, my girl, Jennifer. She has the questions. Go, girl. Uh, actually, I actually have two, if that's okay. <laughs> oh, two for the price of one, girl. <laughs> Since we're talking about Udars, for deacons, is the reason why it's worn on the left shoulder rather than the right because it's closer to the heart? Is that the reason? Or is there another reason? Or no reason? I don't know of any reason. I would say simply because of the fact that when the deacon is to do the purvad, oh, okay. the on the right shoulder would kind of get in the way. Maybe. That makes sense. Sometimes we do things with common sense in mind. <laughs> Sometimes. I, maybe this is one of those times. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Next question. My, my other question is... Um, Aren't like the responsibilities of a deacon, isn't it almost the same as a priest, except for just a few things? Like, aren't deacons able to run badarak like by themselves up to a certain extent, like without a couple of things that they can't? I know there's certain things they can't do, but a deacon can offer the jamer kutus, the hour services with the exception of the blessing. He offers the prayer, the priest offers a prayer. And it comes to a point where he turns around, he says, a minute soon. Deacon does not have that right. Remember I said during the ordination of a deacon, he takes the purvat and he sends it to the bishop and he says to the bishop, bless Lord. And the bishop blesses. At the ordination of a priest, the bishop takes the purvat and acts as the deacon after the priest is consecrated with the oil and uh, given the new name and so forth. And he says to the deacon, to the newly ordained priest, and the priest who has his hands clasped because they have been consecrated with holy mutant, he turns and he faces the concept, the, the, the people. And he offers his first blessing. A deacon does not have the right to bless anything. A priest does. A priest has the right to bless, but not consecrate. I cannot consecrate a church or an icon or anything else in that regard. I can bless, but not consecrate. A deacon can, with permission, offer communion to the sick in hospitals or at home, but not to receive a confession. Again, it is only through the ordination of the priest who gives given the permission to absolve the sins of the man. 
A deacon doesn't have any of that. So there are certain things. He can conduct the hour services, not Baldadak at all in any means. He can conduct the hour services, uh, <clears throat> pray, and have he, all the uh, responsibilities that he has been given as a tabid to pray for the sick, to, to perform exorcism again, as we said, and so forth, up until the rank of his diaconate. Okay? Okay. What is Anyone else? No one else? No other questions? I mean, I explained everything so beautifully that everybody understood everything? Jeez, I even had to look up stuff. Nice. Okay. All right. So, as I explained at the beginning of our session, some of you weren't on it as of yet, um, our next session, which will be on the 20th of December, we are going to review a video called Martin the Cobbler. It's a story by Tolstoy. It's a very simple, beautiful story. And the video is in claymation. Claymation is almost like a cartoon with, they use these clay figures that move and they take pictures anyway. I guess I don't know the technology technological aspect of it, but it's a cute thing. It's a very old film that's uh, that's on there. It's not very good. Um I saw it again a couple of times on YouTube. I'll be sending <coughs> sending the address to you all uh and the script as to what takes place, what to look for and so forth. Um and we're going to be discussing it on the 20th. It's not really a Christmas story, but I think it's very appropriate for the Christmas season. Um, the the original work by Tolstoy, if I'm not mistaken, was called Where Love Is, God Is, something of that idea. Um, I've done it with, with kids, I've done it with adults uh, and everything in between. Uh, it's fun, it's, it, it's, it's interesting, it's interesting. Uh, you need to pay attention to a lot of the stuff that goes on. I suggest the way you look at it is that you watch it, read the script that I'm going to be sending out as well, and then watch it again to pick up on those things that you may have missed the first time. And then we're going to talk about it. You're going to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to take the night off. Fair? Fair enough? Huh? All right. Okay. So, if there is nothing else, by the way, I got a haircut today. Okay, nice. My my long hair that was down my back is all gone. I um, noticed their hide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's gonna be like this for another year until it grows back down to my neck again. I get it looks, it looks better. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the girl that cuts my hair, she said, Haven't I seen you before? I said, Yeah, about a year ago. She says, yeah, she's going like this in the back of my shoes. She goes, you haven't been here since then? I said, it doesn't grow that fast. So anyway, she cut it. She cut it. I said, trim. Just trim. Keep it full. Of <laughs> a little more than the trim. She's from Thailand, so I guess there's a language communication problem. But anyways, each for you. I won't have to spend any money for another year anyways. Okay. <laughs> so in two weeks, any questions that come up in between? Anything you have? Anything that bothers you? Anything you want to know about? You know where I am, folks. All right? Thank you. God bless. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you, Ted Hodge. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Uh, thank you. Thank I'll, you. Send, I'll send you the uh, video in a little bit. Okay, buddy. Thank you very much. Bye.